Welcome back to my channel and the second part in a three-part series with the new Apex players and staff from their 2024 campaign. If you missed part one, you can check it out in the card in the corner of the screen or subscribe to my channel as I will be releasing more of these in the run-up to the start of Polaris Split 1 on February 1st and into the rest of the year as well. This player has been on my radar for almost two years now and already proven that he has what it takes to play at a tier two level. It's now about making that next step to towards greatness. Apex answer in the duelist department, an emergent to keep your eyes on and the Polish prodigy, which is getting everybody excited. I was lucky enough to talk with Kayak. Kayak, welcome to the channel. You are the new duelist on Apex. How are you doing, man? Yeah, hello everyone. It's my first interview. So I'm uh, maybe a bit stressed, but yeah, I'm doing good. Not only first interview, first ever interview in English. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We were both at the Streamers League in Wrocław in uh, 2022. So uh, what would have been two years ago now, almost uh, in a little bit of time. And um, yeah, I never saw you give an, an interview in English there. I didn't know that you could even come on an English team. So this is a very sort of new experience for, for you, I suppose. How are things going at the moment for you with uh, with Apex? How how have things been since joining up with the squad? Mm, I'm it's I'm getting there. I'm getting used to the English comms, you know, and it's getting a lot better since the beginning for sure. Yeah all the way since uh, that land that we were both at, I think a lot of people saw you as this rising star within Poland. Did you feel a lot of weight on your shoulders in living up to that, perhaps? What was it like making your way through the Polish scene and now finally hitting the international stage? Mm -hmm. Oh, not really, I think. I played the game for fun, kind of. I played semi-competitive back then, but when I finished school, I I decided I want to go pro and try something else, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, I was playing the game just kind of for fun back then when I was uh, in the school. In the school. How did you get into Valorant and how did you get into esports? Because you're you know, obviously quite a young player. Did you have any kind of a CS background or did you just sort mm, of go no, straight? No, no, I played before Valorant, I played Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like semi-pro like not really i was just playing the game get some earnings like 400 dollars or something yeah. <laughs> yeah and after that uh the valorant came and i decided to play the open beta i really liked it so i played a lot in the episode one act three i believe mm -hmm. it was like the most played episode for me mm -hmm. the, the act sorry the act and after that I had some family problems, so I had to quit the game for like one one episode, I think. And after that, I didn't want to play Valorant anymore. Like, yeah, I just I just wanted to play it for fun. But mm. uh, my friend Six asked me if I wanna play in the project Incognito. I believe it was like this. And I decided I want to try competing and yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, I mean, we've we've hit the Fortnite generation of new players coming through now then, right? It's it's not people coming from 1.6 or Go anymore. It's uh, it's the this new wave of Fortnite players coming through. So, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting to see. You, you also spent about a year or so on the Incognito team. What was it that you learned from playing with that roster? Because I saw there are quite a few players that sort of dipped in and out. I know that Patitek was there for a little bit while he was still going through different offers. It was a roster which made it into East, into Tier 2. What was it like being part of that journey? Mm, it was amazing. Like... I really liked the guys that were playing with me. They were awesome every time, everyone. And uh, I played a lot of officials actually, so I learned a lot for sure. And playing with Patitek and yeah, Patitek mostly. And he, he gave me a lot of things that I can learn. To go back again as well, with this being your first time coming in English, what would you say one of the biggest challenges has been for you sort of settling into that team and the improvements that you've made over um, that period of time? Uh, I think the 
the vibe in English is like something else, you know, like it's a bit harder than in Polish, like I have to get used to it more. Like Something else to mention as well would be that this is the first time that you've really been in an org setting where you've had huge backing with, you know, loads of coaching staff, people yeah, yeah, yeah. supporting you and stuff like that. Um, how has it felt moving into that kind of environment where it feels like you're playing you know, for a living, right? This is your job now. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not just that it's like part time or that maybe you get a jersey in the post and, and that's it, right? There are people... Um, working day and night behind the scenes to make sure you succeed. I mean, it's uh, I really like, like it. It's like it's really professional. I can lo learn a lot faster than before. So yeah, I really like it. Mm. And how has that affected your mental with it being more of a job, right, than it being just something that you're doing for fun or casually, mm -hmm. like you said before? Does it really give you that extra 1% to sort of wake up in the morning and make sure that you're, you know, logging on and getting ready for scrims and stuff like that? Mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. It's, it's better to, like, when I played before, like, I didn't pay that much, that much attention for it for Valorant and the screams and everything like and it's my job I I try to do my best mm -hmm. <coughs> Of course, I mean, it, when we speak of casual gaming, you are now the number one player in ranked. I don't know whether you've lost it yet no, or not. No, I do not. I do not. I like. mm. So, uh, I mean, in terms of your practice routine and how that actually factors in, I know there are a lot of players that focus you know, way too much on ranked. Maybe they don't get enough out of their game. How do you blend it in with, you know, scrims and practice and making sure that you're not picking up on bad tendencies that you would maybe have in a ranked setting? So after the screams, I have like some aim routine that I play. Not not every day, but I maybe every two day, something like that. Every two days, yeah. I play aim lab. I play DMs. I play ranked. Like well, what I want, basically. Like I don't have the stable aim routine, you know. Hmm. It's so not the same every time. Yeah, then trialing for Apex, where was it that you first got the call up from? Who was it that suggested that you play with this uh, group of guys? And what was it like mm. getting integrated to that team? It was my manager, FRS. He asked them if they want to try me out and they decided they want to. And when I uh, came back from the bootcamp from Z10, uh, I trialed for three days, I believe, and after two days, or maybe three, they decided they want me, basically, so. But then it was you, it was a really good time. Yeah. This bootcamp that you went on, though, how do you think that sort of compares to ones that you had been on before? How exactly uh, was it joining up with the rest of the team for the first time and uh, meeting everyone in person? I think it was my best bootcamp, like, the, everything was on point, you know, the, <coughs> the all the schedule was really good. We played many screams, we had a, maybe not a lot of free time, but we had a free time. When I wanted something, everyone wanted to help me, so, yeah. Yeah, and what were your first impressions meeting some of the players like, you know, Evolver, Solcas, uh, Molsi even, that have played in VCT last year and uh, their experience maybe rubbing off on you? I mean, it was kind of like uh, weird for me, you know, because I basically go from tier 3, like the really, maybe not really low tier 3, but tier 3 to basically top one team in tier two, no? Like, it's a really big jump for me, like. It was kind of, it is, it was kind of weird at the beginning to play with, like, the big names, but, yeah, it's, it's really good now. Mm. What, what have you take, uh, taken away from being around them and how exactly it is that they train from day to day when you're in that environment and how they approach things from their standpoint? I think it might be mostly the mental mm -hmm. that they have. Like they wanna improve, they wanna be the best, they wanna like they wanna be the best, yeah. Like I think it's mostly the mental maybe. Mm, 
Yeah, I think that's it. Like, I don't know what to tell. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> actually. no. It's, it's fair. It's Again. fair. Um, so then coming into this team and being such a young player and you already said making the jump up from tier three to what you now consider to be you know the top team within um emea for challenges do you feel a lot of pressure on yourself to be performing as part of this roster mm. no not really i'm not that i'm not the that kind of person that stress a lot okay I just do what I have to do. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I suppose then, with, with you making that jump up, if you look at the goals that you set yourself for last year, would you say that you achieved everything at that point? And what did you uh, set up from the for? last year? Yeah. What well, What goals did you set up for yourself last year, and do you think that you achieved everything? I could I could win the split three, the off season split of the. <clears throat> How it's called? V VCL East? Yeah, I think yeah. so. But we didn't manage to win it, so I didn't achieve an ev everything, but I won two sprints before, so it was really good anyway, year for me. Mm. Uh, what goals do you, have you then set for yourself this year individually or anything that you can share? Do you have a list of New Year's resolutions that you uh, want to give us? This year, um, I want to... I, I just want to be the best, you know, like I want to win everything. I'm hungry for winning and I want to, yeah, I want to be the best. Mm. Um, what do you then think of the level in Polaris and what you've seen of the league, what your understanding is from the outside looking in? Are there any rivals that you're expecting to be playing Actually, against? Actually, I never watched Polaris before. No. <laughs> Any game, no, I didn't watch Polaris before, so I, I don't even know what who is playing in Polaris. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, I could try and give you some names, but you, you've put me on the spot a little bit there. I mean, you do have like the the Bratan mix now coming through open qualifiers. Maybe they're already knocked out by the time this video goes live, but you know there are a few players in there that perhaps you would know. Mm, probably Foxy. Yeah. And. I don't know who is playing there. You can maybe tell me some nicks. Uh, Demonsic, Bravav, some other players. In, okay, okay. In, in there. So yeah, I know yeah. the names, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to be honest, open qualifiers is not too many, so it's uh, it's it's difficult to say. But so your understanding of Polaris is is uh, pretty like bare minimum. Then I guess you could say. Um, are you just expecting to be the best team in the league then? I mean, yeah, yeah, like. We even have to to qualify for ascension, you know. But mm -hmm. I think like, yeah, I we I expect to win. Fair enough. I mean, I I I completely uh, I completely agree, and and that's what Apex are setting you up for, right? They um yeah, yeah, they, they I, want you to have that kind of success. And then looking at the coaching staff that you have behind the scenes as well, you've got Danny and then Desmo. From speaking with those two, what kind of vibe is it in the team right now that uh, they want from you? As a duelist, are you someone who's you know got the freedom to just be super aggressive, or do you need to take those steps back and be a little bit more mature at times? I th I think I have the I have a lot of freedom, but I sometimes I have to like play a little more passive. Mm. Like it's uh, I have to I have to be more disciplined, you know. Like mm. I have to respect some uh, advantages, and you know, I before I didn't pay ma that much attention to it, like. But on the top level, you have to pay attention to this kind of advantages, 5v4, you know, this kind of things. Okay. I mean, for people who don't know what Kayak is about as a player, how would you describe your playstyle to someone who hasn't uh, been able to watch you before? Mm, for sure, I'm aim demon. <laughs> uh, I'm not that crazy duelist, so maybe not crazy duelist. I'm like more. I can be aggressive, mm -hmm. and maybe. Hmm. What would you say? 
Me? Well, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you know, I've, I watched a, a little bit of Kayak here and there. I remember the Rays, what was it, like 16 kills in three rounds or something? Yeah, you know, it was a show match tournament, but um, that yeah, was yeah, pretty yeah, impressive. That, so, yeah. I mean, you have a bit of flexibility to the agent pool, I think you could say. I've seen you play both, you know, Jet and Rays. In terms of like a, a Neon or Yoru or maybe even an ESO now, how are you feeling about those kinds of agents? Are those something that you would consider playing or something that you don't really really um, involve yourself with I don't like neon okay but uh, besides that I can play everything yeah okay would you ever consider moving on to an initiator for a certain team comp or are you very strictly on being this duelist and being a space maker for your team mm, I can play I could play like controller or sentinel I think okay yeah I before the duelist I played controller in like the beginning of Valorant, kind of, mm. when I started competing something, yeah. I played a lot of controller. But yeah, I mean, those are pretty much all of the questions that I have, Kayak. I'll leave the closing statements with you. If there's anything that you want to say to people of the Polaris League or maybe people who have helped you on your journey to get this far, I mean, the, the stage is yours. I don't know what to say. Just maybe for the fans, I will say that keep cheering for us, and I think we will win at all this year, maybe. Mm. Okay, well, I appreciate the confidence, Kayak. Thank you for joining me on the interview, um, and best of luck in Superdome as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.